Welcome to a bit of a different video. I thought that since I'm talking so much about, you know, the past, what happened back then during Arc 1 when the server, the Margaret server was still new, we still had people that could only read the Japanese text and had to tell everyone else what's going, what was happening currently in Arc 1 until maybe weeks, months later, we we're getting any, uh, any translation on what was actually going on and there was a lot of crazy stuff that was happening in that time so maybe i'm going to talk about some of that most importantly probably the greatest theory that we ever had going into arc one so this was a theory that was created about during our chapter three or chapter four like pretty early on in the last time maybe around chapter five even and the theory is the following what if iroha was a rumor and Uwasa. So this is a rumor that uh, was started at, like I said, it's around chapter 4, chapter 5. So maybe a f just a few months after the game was released and people have been talking uh, just about random crazy theories because that was the kind of time where people just had all kinds of crazy theories. Maybe Oi is a rumor. Maybe Oi doesn't exist. Maybe Oi is creating the rumors. Uh, maybe Iroha is a rumor, as I said. Maybe Iroha doesn't actually exist, right? Maybe this is, maybe Iroha is, or maybe Iroha is actually in the hospital and she's dreaming the entire story because every franchise has got, and every single piece of media has got to have the whole, or actually, this is just the dream of a dying guy. It's sort of, uh, crazy theory but well, amidst all of these theories uh, some people have tried uh, to actually make some theories uh, some serious theories because most of these theories were really just for fun let's just say some crazy stuff because at this point it could be anything right it could really be anything or it doesn't exist was also another strong theory that people were trying to you know make a lot of fun of but let's actually talk about this one specifically because this specific theory Iroha is a rumor, actually did have quite a lot of evidence or at least many strong hints throughout the story and the story stayed consistent with this theory up until like chapter 7. So for a really long time this was some this was actually a theory that could realistically have happened. Okay? So I had this comic right here that was created at around chapter 6 uh, by some guy. Um, it is the English translation. I'm just gonna go through this comic very quickly because it kind of puts onto it. It puts like on the table what basically the big pieces of evidence are uh, for this theory. So I'm just gonna voice act it out. <clears throat> Tomoki Iroha, why do your memories differ from mine? Do you have resistance to being brainwashed by a rumor? Why have you been spreading the rumor that Tomoki Iroha exists in Kamehama City? Makyu! There's only one answer. So basically, Toka is saying here that, look, look, she has resistance to being brainwashed, which was at the chapter 2, I think, where they go after the Seance Shrine, where uh, every, where the like, Yachio is sort of being taken by the Seance Shrine rumor, uh, all these other people are being taken by the Seance Shrine rumor, and then you have chapter 6 itself, which is also where you have the rumor trying to brainwash Iroha, uh, the, like, the museum curator trying to brainwash Iroha. No, none of these rumors can actually do it. She has, seems to have this really strong resistance to being brainwashed or mind controlled or have, being influenced by other rumors in any way. Why is that? How how could this be, right? Uh, also, she is the only one who is talking about Ui existing in Kamiyama City, which in itself is a rumor. And we're saying, oh, she's spreading a rumor, kind of like a rumor spreader minion would. So, how is this possible? And then also, why do the diff why do the memories differ? Right? Toka has completely different memories than uh, Iroha does. So does Nemu, but Nemu doesn't appear at this point in the story yet. So Nemu also has completely different memories. How is that possible that everyone has different memories uh, from Iroha? She's the only one who has these memories. She's the only one who knows about Ui and everyone else around her saying, actually, well, these memories that you're having, they're just wrong. How could all of this be possible? But we also know that Ui does actually kind of exist because of the uh, hospital records. But yeah, how could all of this really be true? And the one solution that we all came to at that point, I mean even before this, but this was like the smoking gun, was that what if Iroha is a rumor? Something that a lot of people actually seem to believe. <laughs> that this is really how the story goes. You can also see it was four years ago, so amazing. And the Japanese audience also kind of really liked this idea. Right here, oh, I'm glad the manga record is actually getting interesting. Oh, well, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be interesting if it actually uh, went in this direction, right? Um, we know it didn't actually go in this direction, 
but let's actually explore that a little bit. Let's explore that. We, we talked about this uh, on the uh, on our Discord. On our Discord, we talked about this for uh, multiple times, although not really that deeply in depth because we didn't have that many people. Like, look at the top left right here. There's someone talking about. Um, what the story could be hinting at, like the, how the many duplicates and clones and mirrors and whatever there are. Maybe that one character is actually a clone of another character, or like a doppelganger or something. Uh, and someone brings up, oh, but maybe Ui doesn't exist in Ira's room. Oh, I mean, in this case, mostly brought up as a joke. Those were the only two messages on the 15th of October 2017, because down there is already for 16th of October. So yeah, we didn't really have much going on on our server back then. It's like, what, like a total of three messages across two people for an entire day. Okay, that really wasn't going much, much going on there. Uh, I heard that Japanese people were talking a lot about this a lot more, but sadly I can't quite... Um, I, I wasn't able to find any evidence for that, because I can't speak Japanese, I can't read Japanese, and I, I'm not sure how I would Google something like that and actually find relevant information. But the point is, people were talking about this, but not really that in depth, not really that in detail, people were just sort of throwing it out there like, hey, this is something that really could happen. Maybe this is actually what's gonna happen. Some people really believed that, yeah, this might actually happen. We might get Rumor Iroha, or like a, like a special Rumor version of Iroha, not just like the human Iroha that we have right now, but like an Uwasa Iroha as a, a special unit or something like that. And there was precedence for similar situations in other uh, spin-offs as well. But here's how people actually said this was going to happen, or rather how this was hinted at in the story itself, additional to what I just said. So the entire story from chapter 1 to chapter 6, which is the main point in time where this theory was being theorized. I'm saying theory like 10 times in a minute. And what people were saying is, okay, look at it this way. We have so much going on with the, all these rumors. There's all these uwasas happening all the time. And we also have the search for Ui. So we have these two big topics that concern our protagonist, our main character, Iroha. What about these rumors? And what about Iroha? And uh, what about Ui? And people thought, what if this was connected? It seems like really this is going to be connected, right? We, uh, because... You know, back in the day, people actually thought that this story was going somewhere, okay? That there was actually a point to all of this stuff. So people thought, well, they weren't going to do all of this rumor stuff just to, at the end, ignore it. <coughs> anyway, they thought that all of this was going to be connected in a way. It was connected. But the, the Ui stuff and the rumors are going to be connected. How would all of that be connected? Well, as I said earlier, maybe Ui is a rumor. Maybe Ui is creating rumors, right? Maybe stuff like that. And there was going to be some connection between those two topics, and this would been would, this would have been one theory that also connects these two topics. Hey, Iroha is actually a rumor that is spreading the rumor of Ui exists. But what actually what would actually be the point of that? Okay, and let's get to the next big part. What is actually the point of all this? Why does it matter that Iroha is a rumor? Is is a theory that exists? What does it actually do to the story? Well, how would the story actually continue after chapter six if that really was where they were going? Well, the point that uh, is from at least our Discord that we were having is, well, since there weren't that many people actually talking, like two people a day uh, back then, we didn't really get into any of the details. No one was really talking about any of the details in any way, but uh, at least the details that I heard some people were mentioning was that, okay, maybe she was created by Ui. But let's continue that, okay? Let's do the more work ourselves uh, and let's continue that. Ui, uh, Ui created the rumor of Iroha, existing but why and the idea is that we created the first rumor iroha and why sh why did she do that as a contingency if something bad were to ever happen to ui iroha would be basically be activated and come in to save ui right so she basically created sort of a guardian that hey if anything bad happens to ui iroha will come in and save me that's basically the rumor that ui created but iroha wasn't a person that actually existed and you could also continue that with saying that all of the memories that iroha has were actually ui's memories that ui implanted her own memories of living in takaraki city uh, under these parents and everything that she had done until then were just memories that she implanted into iroha with the only added spin that oh i had a sister right and so all of the memories that ui iroha would have had of living in takaraki city and of the person who she was back in the day but because iroha sometimes talks about oh i was a i was a loser back then and maybe these would be the memories of ui that instead she would she had been given okay 
So this is how that would work out. She's a contingency plan to save Ui in case something bad happens to her. And something bad did happen to her, but we don't know what. And this would be something that uh, we would explore in the last few chapters. Once again, you need to keep mentioning this because I have brought this up to many people. And people always bring up counter arguments that are based on knowledge you gain in chapter 10 or chapter 9. But this entire theory was created somewhere between chapter 3 and chapter 6 with additional information and like pieces of evidence being brought all the way until chapter 7. And only after that did the theory we sort of die down because they were just we kind of figured out that yeah okay this wasn't well, this was not happening okay so keep in mind it's like this is the, this, the knowledge that we had around chapter six is around the knowledge that we're putting into this theory okay so how do we go from here iruha is going to go after we how, how will the story continue after this before we talk about how the story continues let's like talk about uh, the sort of hints that were also buried within the story from chapter one until chapter six. I've mentioned some of them already, like the big ones, but also from a writing perspective, from a storytelling perspective. As I mentioned, we have the Uwasa on one hand, the the rumors and the uh, search for Ui on on the other hand. I talked about how we can how we can bring those two together into one specific uh, story thread, which is Rumor Iroha. But what were actually the uh, story writing hints? that Iroha was a rumor. Well, you, there are so many Uwasas that we're seeing in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. And first, firstly, all of these rumors, all these Uwasa, they don't seem to have any sentience, right? They're just programmed in a certain way. This rumor is programmed to do this one specific thing. It only acts according to its programming and you have to defeat it, and when you defeat it, it just dies, and that's over. That's the end of this Uwasa, okay? Don't think about this Uwasa anymore, because it was just some program, basically, that you destroy, and that's it, okay? This continues for a little while. Uh, at some point, the Uwasa, like, they sort of start to speak a little bit more, and they become a little bit more, I don't want to say sentient, but at least they come across as maybe more of actual living beings, while especially, and this is where we, you know, it gets interesting, Chapter 5. Chapter 5 was for a lot of people that had this theory, this... Uh, the first smoking gun. The second smoking gun I already showed you was the uh, Toka thing right here, that, which happens similar to this in the story where Toka says, hey, your memories are all fake. Um, your pro something is very wrong with you. Ha ha ha. Something like that. This was the second smoking gun. The first smoking gun really was this idea. I'm probably going to stay on this. It was this idea that um, in chapter five, we actually see an Uwasa that acts like a, an actual living character. We have an Uwasa that at one at once when it was created had programming. It did at first just go do its thing according to its programming, but over time through the bond and friendship with another human being was able to sort of form its own identity. It formed a sense of morality. It seemed like it gained a sense of free will, it gained emotions, all of that sort of stuff. Like it sort of became its own living being through its friendship with another human being. And people saw that as a smoking gun, the first smoking gun, that, oh my god, this is what they're doing with Tamaki Iroha. They're, they're showing, look at this, we've shown you all these Uwasa that were programmed to do this one thing and they, were, they didn't have sentience, but now we're showing you an Uwasa that had friends right, that had a human being that it could rely on, and through that it was able to gain sentience, gain free will. And then it was probably gonna say later on, and this is what Iroha is. And it would have made so much fucking sense, and it would have recontextualized everything you've seen up until that point. Would that not have been an absolutely fantastic way of tying all of the Uwasa we've seen until then, especially in uh, uh, Aichan, into this reveal that, hey, you've already seen how uh, Uwasa can evolve and develop and become their own beings. Why would uh, an Uwasa like Iroha not be able to do the same? And then you would sort of look back on the story and you would see that, well, at the very beginning of the story, Iroha just tries to go after Ui. Very single-minded, I need to go Ui, I need to save Ui, Ui, just Ui, Ui, Ui. And then over time, after finding Yachio, after finding Tsuruno, after Felicia, and especially Sana, uh, Iroha over time develops more of a sense of her, her own identity apart from Ui. Less Ui, more my friends are my power, sort of Kingdom Hearts shit. So you can see that over time, Iroha was less about Ui and more about her friends. Why? Because through her friends, she was able to form her own identity. And this now brings us to one of the most important things that Arc 1 did not have. I'm sorry, guys. It did not have fucking themes and it did not have a point to it. But with this, we actually would have a point to the story and we would have themes 
wow, wouldn't that be great? So here's the themes of the point that we would actually have. First off, the uh, everything we've done with the rumors and the Owasa would actually lead to something because right now in Arc 1, we find out Nemo did the rumors and then she just, and then we we're like, okay, we're not gonna make any more rumors. And since you've defeated all the rumors, the rumors are just done. And we thought that the rumors were gonna lead to something, but instead it's just like, oh, the rumors are done now. And everyone's like, what, what do you mean the rumors are done? So this doesn't mean this this didn't mean anything. Okay, then I guess this didn't mean anything. The rumors were just made uh, like practically to have different kind of enemies to fight every single chapter. That's basically what rumors were created like from the developers of the game. Great. The rumors could have actually been swapped out for just witches that were being controlled by the Magius. If the rumors were just witches controlled by the Magus, I think the story would basically be the same. But in this new idea with Iro Rumor Iroha, now rumors actually have a point to existing because you, would, you could see that this is something that witches can't do, which is gain sentience, which is become basically a humanoid being, right? So that would actually have been a point to all this rumor shenanigans stuff, especially because this is something that also people kind of miss. Rumors are beings, sentient beings, that are being created out of thin air, which is a pretty crazy thing to think about that you can just snap sentient life into existence and then kill it. Shouldn't there be like some moral implication to creating and destroying sentient life on a whim and playing God? Something that probably someone should have told Nemu? Anyway, this could have been something that actually came up at the end of Arc 1, a sort of, uh, okay, here's the point of why these Owasa were in the story. Secondly, you could have used all of this to make Iroha such a better protagonist. Why? Because instead of just her being like, oh, I like Ui, and that's my entire fucking character, and I'm the good guy, instead you could have said, okay, she's a character who overcame the odds uh, she overcame her own programming to become her own character, okay? She breaks free of her, program, of her programming to gain free will. And you could spin this as sort of a, a beating the odds scenario um, of, of, of the importance of friendship, the importance of uh, bonds with other people to create your own person. And also, more importantly, the importance of making your own choices and your own decisions to form your own per person instead of just relying who you were in the past, who you even were yesterday. Say, I don't fucking care who I was yesterday, the only thing that matters is who I am today and what my choices are today. And you could sort of spin that into a sort of point of the story that Iroha is the uh, sort of the, the character that shows you it does not matter who you were yesterday, the day before that, who, how you were created, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is now. Mewtwo might have some words to say about that. And this would have been another point to the story that you could weave into the uh, the finale of the story, like the last chapter 8, 8, uh, eight 9 and 10. Just like the last three chapters where you could have really gone into all of this. And then, how did people actually think the story was going to end with this rumor? Well, as far as I know, no one actually bothered to really write down any details on how the story could end. But we can sort of figure that out ourselves. How would the story have ended with this sort of theory of rumor Iroha? Well, here's how I think the story would have ended, okay? Let's go big for this. I think how the way that this a story like this could have ended is that ultimately Iroha finds Ui, or whatever is left of Ui. And Iroha would have the choice of resurrecting Ui. So Ui's contingency, I have Iroha who is going to come save me, works out. Iroha comes and is able to save Ui. However, here's the thing. There would probably be something uh, negative about this. Probably something like resurrecting Ui might uh, resurrect Eve or cause Eve to go on a big rampage, might transform Eve into what Pogus Nast or something like that. No one had any idea, like I said. This is just theorizing on what we knew at the point of like chapter 6 or chapter 7, okay? Maybe it would have been a really bad thing for E to come back to life because it could destroy Kamihama City. It could kill millions of people and all of Iroha's friend. Now, if Iroha was still the person who she was at the beginning of the story, just this single-minded Uasa that was created just to save Ui, this probably is what would have happened, right? This uh, single-minded Iroha would probably have just saved Ui and doomed the entire city. But now that Ui, uh, Iroha is her own person, she would have been able to, uh, now with this newfound free will, make the very difficult choice of say, I need to, I, I need to 
take the decision to abandon Ui and leave her to die in order to save all of my friends, all of the people that I've gone attached to, to in order to save the city. And this would be one way of showing how um, her new found uh, personality was now able to overcome her past, but also to make what is ultimately the right choice. Okay? Which would have been very bittersweet. We all would have, everyone reading this would have been like, yeah, I understand that this is the right choice, but it would have still been really, really sad. And I think this would have been, this would have been a really nice ending as well for the story. Why? Because on one hand, Iroha uh, had already gained Ui's memories. So Ui, in her like dying moments, could have said like, Iroha, you go and live out uh, my life uh, in my stead. Be my legacy, basically. I've given you life, now go and make the best of it. You could, you could have had this really emotional ending uh, in that sort of way where Iroha like, li uh, lives on as the legacy of Ui. But on the other hand, you then could have said that now that we've gotten to this point, Iroha uh, had to make this very uh, difficult decision. We are still saving the city. You could even spin it in a way that the double system still continues because of Eve or whatever. So we would still have basically, we would still have the victory. We would still have a very similar victory to, similar to what we actually got in the game where the double system exists and the city is saved, okay? But, and this is the, like the, the, the bitter thing, is that we couldn't save Ui. So it would be still a mostly positive ending in that we save the city, the double system is fine, maybe some other characters die along the way, but for the most part, it would have been a victory. It would have been a victory in the most part, just with these sort of bitterness at the end. And, so, and I think this overall bittersweet but still positive ending, similar to how episode 12 ended in PMMM, in like the Buddha Magi Marika Marika, I think that would have been fine. I think that would have been fine. A lot of people would have actually really enjoyed that. So yeah, overall, this was sort of the uh, theory of Iroha is a rumor that was really uh, quite popular, specifically around chapter 5, 6, 7, uh, that then sort of died off when it became obvious and yeah, this is not where the story was going. But I think that seeing how the story actually went, that it didn't really have a point, that it didn't really go anywhere, and that, to be honest, the ending was kind of nonsensically in how positive it was. That character, there was, I think like three or even four characters, yeah, four characters, that by all rights should have been dead, that really should have died, that just miraculously survived for no fucking reason. Um, but the point is, there were no consequences and no point to the actual ending of the game and this sort of Iroha rumor version of the story would have provided that. It would have given a point to the story, sort of a moral at the end. It would have given us a bittersweet ending with really emotional scenes at the end there um, and it would have been consequences for the characters. I think overall that would have probably ended up in a better uh, story. This is not, by the way, the rewrite story. Some people might say, oh, maybe this was, what, this was what the story was going to be before the rewrite. I highly doubt it. I really don't think this is what the story was going to be before the rewrite. Uh, but still, I think that this was, would have been a more interesting way of taking the story, maybe a way that, that more cool shit would have happened, okay? And people would have talked about this more positively than right now if most people who actually read the story. I mean, I was here in, uh, when this first happened, when chapter 10 first happened on the cha Japanese server back in early 2019 I think it was and yeah most people who were there at the time aren't on the server anymore why because chapter 10 made them so angry that they decided to quit the game so most of the people who are still with the game are those people that just either didn't care or actually kind of like chapter 10 but yeah most people didn't like it most people did not like chapter 10 but most of them just aren't on the server anymore or just part of the community anymore but I think that at least maybe maybe the Iroha rumor story would have had longer staying power that was the hope you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe button, ring the bell, and I'll see you guys next time.